two special <laughs> guests that we have here in studio. Uh, very fortunate, very honored to have two of our uh, guests. I'm a big fan, uh, and I've been a big fan of the first gentleman that we're going to introduce all the way to the left. Uh, the former 154-pound WBO champion of the world has fought legends in the sport, defeated Miguel Cotto, uh, fought Jesse Vargas, has, has fought some of the top names in the world. Former world champion, now turned advisor slash best friend slash trainer slash spiritual advisor. <laughs> the one and only Saddam Adi. Saddam, welcome to the show, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for having you. Uh, it's good to be here. It's great to have you here. Flew in from New York. And the protege next to him, uh, currently undefeated, 11 wins, zero losses, uh, 118 pounds. He has put the division on notice. Uh, he's got a fight coming up here in October. Uh, the Sheikh, they call him. Sheikh Khaled Tweety. Khaled, welcome, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. Ma, thank you for being here. All right, let's get down and dirty. Let's get into business. First of all, Saddam, good to have you back, brother. Thank you. Um, I've been a fan for a long time. Uh, and, and everything that you accomplished, I was shocked when I asked you how old you were. You're still 33 years old. Mm -hmm. You accomplished a lot young. Yeah, I mean, um, thank you. Um, and uh, I started karate. At five years old, first off, I, I was in the house before that. And my dad, I, I was in the house with a lot of women, you know, cousins, sisters, a, a lot of women in the house. And my dad came home one day from work because my dad came from back home from Yemen, started with a, with, with a grocery store and then, you know, built from there. But anyway, as he's grinding and working, he comes home and he sees me playing patty cake, patty cake. <laughs> <laughs> I know. With the girls, man, this, I this know. is no lie. This is no lie. And this is how it happened. And he's like, "Oh no, my son is not." But nah, he needs to. I need to take him to a man sport or something. So he took me to karate at five years old. I was doing karate up until I was eight. And when I turned eight, I started boxing. And there was a time in my life where I was doing karate, boxing. And gymnastics at this, like sometimes oh, even on the same day, like I feel like I was, I was a robot when I was younger. Yeah. But you know, um, alhamdulillah and thanks to my dad, because like he believed in me, he took me everywhere. You sure. Know? Some people don't have that guidance where you can, my dad would just put me in the car, take me here, take me there for the experience. I traveled everywhere as an amateur, you know, um, just to like get the experience. And and and, and um, Saddam, you had a lot of success as an amateur. You were won the PAL championships, under nineteen, um, junior Olympic gold medalist. I mean, she has a lot of success as an amateur, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the, also, the national golden gloves. You know, in New York, period, it's hard to win the golden gloves. But now, when you fight in, a, in a, the national golden gloves, now you got to fight. I didn't every, know you won the national golden gloves. Like, wow. Twice, twice in a row. Mashallah. I fought only four in the gloves twice. And now you got to fight everybody from every state that won yeah. the Golden Gloves, and you got to beat them too. And uh, Terrence Crawford, there we go. Thank you. How could I forget the legend? Anyway, uh, Terrence Crawford actually uh, was was in my weight class for that too, but he lost to a guy named Rico Ramos, and I beat hmm. I beat him in the finals. So, um, so yeah, the, the Golden Gloves was big. There was so many tournaments, but like I said, I, I had the guidance. Uh, my dad took me everywhere. I wanted to be special. My my main focus in life was, I mean, everybody wants to be successful and eventually one day you'll get some great money, right? But for me, it was, I just wanted to be special. I wanted to be that sure. guy that people, was, like kids would look up to or people would want to take pictures with me. That, that was my drive. You know, so so that's what I what I looked up to, and you accomplished that. I mean, in in your own right, you know, especially especially amongst the Arab Muslim population, yeah. uh, you know, you became somewhat of a household name, especially during your prime. Everybody was talking about Saddam Ali. I remember one of the fighters that was about to fight you, without mentioning names, they were going to fight, and I said, "Man, that's a tough fight. You that boy's <laughs> nasty, man. You don't you don't want to fight that guy." Uh, so you did well for yourself, man. We're very proud of you, and and, and I know in boxing you made a big mark as well. Thank you. So now you're working with Khaled. What's the relationship between you and Khaled right now? Uh, I, I knew Khaled since I was way long ago, you know, since I was younger. And, um, you know, Khaled, I seen him getting into boxing as well eventually. And he really wanted to do it. He looked up to uh, Prince Nassim Hamed, same as me. Sure. So the reason why I started boxing really was 
you know, coming up watching Prince Nassim Mohammed, and he made it look so fun in that ring. Comes out dancing, mm-hmm. gets in there, and it just destroys, you know? Um, so, you know, his motivation came from that and probably seeing wh- how I did it. And it's like, he wants to do it. So I, I just, I believe in him. Uh, so there's no relation. You guys aren't related. No. no. Just very close friends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We I'm feel sure like, we feel like cousins and brothers at the same time, but we're not related. Um, but I just, it reminds me of myself, like in a way, like <clears throat> I want to be great and I know he yeah. wants to be great. And I see that he, he has that drive. You know, and it's just it's not easy. I mean, if if it was easy, everybody would do it, yep. you know. So, but I believe in them. Khalid, so tell us a little bit about you. So, um, where should we start? Let's start from the, <laughs> from, the, from the beginning, from the amateur experience in the beginning and, and, and your grasp of boxing and, and how you came up. Okay, so I'm going to just start off with starting boxing. I started boxing at the age of nine. I was just one of those kids that was always fighting in school, mm-hmm. in the parks, and just always getting into trouble. And my uncles, you know, they were big uh, fans of boxing. They loved boxing. They watched boxing on TV all the time. Um, of course, being a Yemeni, we were always watching Prince Nassim fights, also Mike Tyson. So I always just loved it. I felt like every time I watched these fights, I just felt like it was me. Like I belonged in that position, you know. And it just felt so, I don't know. I just felt like I belonged in the ring. So I always mm-hmm. asked my dad, yo, take me boxing, take me boxing. He was against it. He didn't like, he didn't want his son to get, you know, punched in the face. Right. And he sees that it's a crucial sport. So he was against it until one day uh, my uncle decided to take me to the gym. So we were going to the gym for like a month long and my dad didn't know. And then I had my first For fight the whole come. month your father didn't know you were training? He was wondering why my uncle's picking me up every day. <laughs> 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 and he was like, yo, what's going on here? And then we eventually told him, we were like, yo, Khalid got his first fight coming up. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then he seen that I was super passionate about it and that I loved it and that I was good at it, you know? So he supported me ever since. Oh, nice. And I've competed in many tournaments. I've traveled the States, you know, competed against some of the top guys in the in the world right now. Um, and How many yeah, amateur fights you have? I have about 80, 80-something. 80 oh, my God, you got a lot of experience. yeah. yeah. Compared to the other guys, I don't have that much fights. There's guys out there with like 200, 300 fights. Yeah, no, 80 is a good, a good amount. Well, 80 is a solid. I feel like after 40 ish, you you find yourself as a fighter. You yeah. know who who you are, you know. And um, yeah, now I'm 11 and 0 as a current professional. Alhamdulillah, and I'm looking forward to to taking over the division. Nice. And you're fighting at 118 pounds. Yes. It's actually starting to. I mean, there, there. It's getting uh, a lot of notoriety because of the monster. Right. It's about to get a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, usually, lighter weight classes. You know, there's not a lot of attention. You had it, it alluded, and you brought up Prince Nassim Hamed, personal friend, absolute legend, and and what he did outside of the ring, what he did inside of the ring, his entrances, his talking, his his whole demeanor, everything brought so much attention to that lower weight class, and it let those guys know that, listen, there is money in that weight class if you can make enough noise inside, right. outside of the ring. You got to be able to bring it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Yemeni background? Yeah, correct. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. Born and raised in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, how's the boxing scene out there in New York these days? The boxing scene is amazing. You know, we got a lot of type fighters, especially coming from my generation. Yep. You know, we got um, fighters, Edgar Berlanga, which we've uh, shared the ring with a few times. We got Christopher Colbert. We shared the ring a few times. Richardson Hitchens, Rashid Mahdi, Nikita. So much people in my yeah. in my age bracket, you know, that I was that I grew up with and shared the ring with a lot of them. Does Berlanga live out in New York? I believe, yeah, I believe he lives in New York. He just got a new trainer, actually, a trainer that I used to use, Juan De Leon, who's yeah. based out of Buffalo. Yeah. Are they a training out of New York now? I'm not too sure if he's still. Oh. Yeah. Over there, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't I don't think so. I think he might be out in Vegas, isn't he? I, I feel like his last training camp was in Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah you know what? Puerto Rico makes sense because Juan's out there a lot. Right. Yeah, yeah that makes there. sense. Yeah. yeah, but New York's always been a hotbed for it. And you know what's crazy is, so I came up from Buffalo, New York, and they're two different New Yorks. 
even the Golden Gloves are separated, right? They used to be yeah. called the Syracuse Golden Gloves. Now they're the Buffalo New Golden Gloves. And then yeah. you have the New York, the, the, the Daily Golden Gloves. Right. Um, they don't even have that no more. Oh, what do they have now? It's called the Ringmasters. Oh, really? Yeah. They took over the Daily Golden Gloves? Daily News didn't want to sponsor them no more for some reason. Wow, so that was a long run they had. Yeah. Very long. So now it's Ringmasters. Uh, that would be, you know, taking over the Golden Gloves. How long ago was that? I believe three years ago. Oh, okay. So it yeah. wasn't too recent. Wow. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been detached from that amateur scene. Yes. So you turned pro what year? I turned pro 2017. 2016, sorry. Okay. What was the biggest difference that you saw transitioning over between an amateur and a pro? Uh, Taking off the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I felt naked in the ring, man. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I mean... The lights are definitely a little more different, you sure. know, with the, all those lights beaming. You could actually, it feels like a heater on your head, literally. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, a little smaller gloves. And no headgear. Well, I was fighting in the amateurs without headgear. Right. I think oh, during their time, they fought with no headgear. That's made the transition. So yeah. I had about Great. 10 fights without headgear already. So I was pretty comfortable with that already. So, Dom, what's your take on the headgear? Um, Because that's the big point of contention, I, with I or without the, headgear. I think for the amateurs, I feel like it was it's important to. Okay, to, let me ask you this: to use the headgear. Do you think it really protects that much, or it blinds your capacity to see, which actually ends up having you get hit more? That's a good point because there are times if you don't have the right headgear, like you, you, the eyesight, it can mess. It's up awful. Some bit. of that, yeah. some of that, the puffy ones, like especially the ones with the, with the cheek protectors. Which, by the way, the amateurs usually most uh, uh, amateur organizations. One. You know, USA Boxing recommends to have those. Um, your peripheral vision's off, which means that you can't see the shot until it lands on your face. Exactly, yeah. I always used to wear open face headgear. A lot of people would tell me, you know, get the closed face one because it protects you more. But I wasn't getting hit with the open face, so for me... The other good. point also is, you know, that headgear, it's got a good, you know, two inches on each side on the top. It's got probably another right. three or four inches boxing is a game of inches when you slip a shot you slip it by an inch exactly. so if that headgear is there you're still getting clipped yep. you know um, so and that's that's the argument of wearing headgear or not i i could say not having a headgear on i feel faster with my head yeah i i can see the punches better yep uh i feel untouchable a lot more but i still must agree that the headgear being on is a lot safer yeah I would agree. In you still get knocked out, but it's yes. still. I would agree. It's, it, there's probably an element of it being safer, but if you balance it versus how much more you get hit, it's probably yeah. going to even out. Now, mind you, getting cut and whatnot, yes, I totally agree with you. It, it will help, it will help right. you know, and prevent that a little bit more, head butting, things like that. But that's always been a point of contention. I'm all for amateurs not wearing headgear. All yeah. for it. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think they I get mean, hit less, I, like you said. I feel like said. at this point, yeah, it's. It's time for no hay gear. Yeah. The only yeah. rough part about it is if you catch a cut and you're like in a tournament, you got to fight with the cut for the rest of the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So tournament tournaments are a different animal. You okay. Know? Look, yeah. I have a question. Let's okay. Go. If you if you guys feel that way, right? Mm -hmm. Then why do we spar with hay gear? Because the sparring is so many rounds over rounds over rounds over rounds. That, that kind of culmination, like if if you have that much wear and tear. And plus, I th I think that I mean, that you adds said up. We can't see. You said we, we I, can't. Listen, let me ask you this: We deal with the same thing. We can't really see with that. But let me ask you this: You know that when you spar and you wear that headgear, it's an unspoken. It's almost a silent agreement. You know you're going to get hit more. You know it's going to be more of like a kind of a. You're not going to be true. as slick so, yeah. with headgear. On. Well, then I shouldn't. We shouldn't wear. No, it No, I, I disagree <laughs> because I think the cut in sparring is is where the headgear comes in. Yeah, yeah. especially because if you have like a fight coming up, now you yeah. get cut. Now you can't fight. Right, you know, and so. you fight eight, ten, twelve rounds. You spar how many rounds? You do that yeah. in, in the gym one day. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. So uh, you uh, multiply that by three times a week. Let's say you're sparring, you know, twenty, thirty rounds a week. Mm. That's a lot of wear and tear on you. Yeah. In that point, yeah, probably the the headgear without. Yeah, but true. it's always been a yeah. back and forth on it, you know. Right. All right, Khalid, what do you got next? What's uh, what's coming up for? Actually, you know, before we even get into that, mm -hmm. the Sheikh. Yeah. Where did that come from? It's Sheikh Khalid. That's his name, Sheikh Khalid. Sheikh Khalid Twaiti. So um, the beard. I got that name <laughs> just from people just calling me Sheikh. 
because of the way I present myself, you know, I try to always make my prayers. I'm not the most religious guy in the world, I would say, but alhamdulillah, I try to be my best, you know. And people just see the beard, you know, so they're just like, yo, Sheikh, what's Sheikh? And when I'm in the masjid, let's say I'm running late to prayer or something like that, and there are other people trying to make their prayer, they're always trying to make me lead. No, you're the Sheikh. <laughs> oh, wow. You fit the persona then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So no, no wonder you did that so good when we was at the... Uh, we was at Adam's fight, and you know before, before Adam fought in the locker room, he was warming up, and then we did it. We did we did a little prayer. Alhamdulillah, nice. And, and he was the the front runner. Yeah. So so, I'll, but you didn't. Okay, I've seen people do that, right? And it's like they get a little nervous and they stutter with with you know with some of it, or like they mess up or they forget. You know, like it happens, but. Nah, with you, you was like a pro. You was like, you oh, so really you're ready for the big show. He's you're a real ready shit. for the lights. I'm, yeah. I'm not. To him, I am. But I'm not. Like, he's, he's not shaky. But alhamdulillah, he's just a I am shaker. a real shit. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, so, so you brought that up, um, Saldam. You guys uh, are also intertwined somehow with this YouTube celebrity kind of boxing, Adam Saleh and uh, the new kid, Slim. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm too, maybe like four to five years about. They, they, I knew them personally already a little bit, but they came to my gym. This is when I was in Bay Ridge, and uh, they was just letting me know they were doing a charity event. I believe it was in the UK, and it was for Yemen and some other countries. Are either of them from Yemen? Both, both. Oh, they're both Yemeni. Yeah, yeah, they're both Yemeni, and um, they just wanted me to train them, you know, and and. I'm not gonna lie, one of them, which is Slim, was so bad when he started. I mean, terrible. Like I got videos where it was terrible. But anyway, he so just had a great Slim. performance on the last card. Didn't oh he? no, he's he's great now. But when he first started, this is how you know, like practice makes perfect, guys. You just keep working on your craft, and I trust me, you, you'll get better. But anyway, when he first started, he was so bad. But now, look at him now. You know, he's yeah. good. as far as a YouTube box show, he's doing great. He's four zero. With four knockouts. Four pro fights? Uh, or the four ex like uh, exhibition fights? Yeah, yeah exhibition. exhibition. I mean, his headgear is off. So so the fights but, that they were just they just had uh, last week or two weeks ago. Yeah. Were they pro, were they pro fights? Pro, yeah, not, Adam had Not a all fight. of them. Gotcha. But yeah, but, but most of them were, were real pro fights. Was that California? Yeah. So the Athletic Commission it deemed them LA. exhibitions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. It was yeah. the Crypto Center, right? Right. Crypto Arena, yeah. So uh, that's... That's slim. And what about Adam? Adam had had his first pro fight. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. Can he fight? Yeah, Adam. Adam has some real skill. I just feel like he needs more experience of like being in the ring mm -hmm. and like doing it more often. You know, I feel like he's sometimes a little gun shy. You know, like he uh, thinks about making the guy miss a little too much when he can just let his hands go. Um, that's about it. But he's doing great. I'm going to ask both of you this question. Khalid, I'll start with you. I'm sorry. Sheikh Khalid, I'm going to start with you. Yes, <laughs> Is YouTube boxing good for boxing? I believe so. It definitely brings a new audience to boxing. And um, there's never nothing wrong with that. They could also start mixing up cards with like YouTube boxers and real boxers. I think that would be dope. I see that in the future. Like Canelo and KSI sharing an event together. You know, I think those will break numbers and... And bring new fans to the sport of boxing. So dumb. I hundred percent agree. I mean, I, I've heard of boxers and boxing fans getting mad about it. But why are you getting mad? Okay, they say, "Oh, but look how much they're getting paid, and these boxers been doing it their whole life." But think about what they've done. Yes. Their life. Let Let's say, for an example, a, a big TikToker or a, a big YouTuber. That's uh, his whole life. He dedicated himself to getting the fan base that he got in boxing. What you really got to aim for is that fan base. You got to have people following you, people that want to see you fight. They have that. And look how much eyes they bring into boxing. So you can't get mad at how much they're getting paid. They worked in their life to be who they are to do that. So, so mom, I couldn't agree with you more. So, so I, I love it. 
I couldn't I agree with you more. And, and, and to that point, because that's the biggest point of contention for fighters, mm-hmm. when they see these YouTube guys like Jake Paul, who's making $15, $20 million yep. a fight, and you're like, well, he doesn't even fight. Right. But what did he do? He started from an early, early age to build his presence on social media, to build his fan base. How much, I mean, how many quote unquote training camps did he go through for his YouTube, for his, mm-hmm. you know, all of the different content creation, all of that. That's a, that really takes a lot of time, tenacity, effort, dedication. And then he just monetized it in boxing. Right. 100%. And for him to get in there, you got to give him props for that too. He's getting into that ring with no headgear, those small gloves. So I got I got to respect the man, bringing new eyes to boxing. Right. You know, so, I mean, I can never hate on it, man. I feel like I would be being fake if I hate on it. Here's the thing. I feel like, let's just say Jake Paul, for example, if he was a teacher, right, and he decided to pursue boxing, people wouldn't be like, oh, now nah, you're a teacher, bro. Right. But because he has this popularity and this fan well, base. Well, it's not the popularity. This is what it is. It's it's a page out of the Floyd Mayweather book. Mm-hmm. He built enough haters to make him popular. Right. He built enough haters to make him popular. Yeah. Floyd did it and it made him a billionaire. Yeah. You know, so Floyd wrote the blueprint on that. Jake Paul took that same ideology and and mind you, the YouTube people love him. Right. You know, the, the YouTube fan base loves him. But why do they detest him? Because he played the villain role. And I'll tell you something. The media will report more of a villain and, and vilify somebody and give more exposure to that than they will any heroes. And the reason, and one of the examples, you know, I always I, I use is, you know, the media never reports airplanes landing safely. They don't care about an airplane. They want a disaster. Right. That's what gets the news. You know, there's an affair in the cockpit and... The pilot was drunk and the thing crashed and people got hurt. Controversy. People love it. People love it. And and he knows how to maximize it. You know, he walked into a UFC arena. The entire arena is, is, is chanting, F you, Jake Paul. <laughs> that's a win for him. You can't listen. You can't look at it like, oh, my God, people hate him. No, that's a win for him. Yeah. Floyd said it perfect. He said, some people pay to see me win. Some Most people. people pay to see me lose, but they all pay. Right. Yep. And at the end of the day, you laugh all the way to the bank. And and that's what it comes down to. I mean, how many world champions have we seen? I don't want to mention his name. I went to the uh, you know the Catastona Bo- uh, International Boxing Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. Canastota, New York, right outside of Syracuse. And um, there was a world champion that was there. As God is my witness, I I, I shed a tear because this was a a, a, um, a significant world champion, a well known world champion that was charging five dollars for people to take a picture with him. Wow. And he was selling his world title belt for five thousand dollars. And it was a historic win. I don't want to tell you the win because yeah. you'll know who it is. But it was it was sad. It is sad. It hurts. It's sad. So at the end of the day, the monetization is for me, it's more important than the glory. Because the glory is not going to pay your electric bills. It's not going to put food on the table for your family. It's not going to give your children an education and the cars and the houses and the, you know, the things that give you satisfaction or at least luxury in life. Right. Or ease in life. Comfort, right. Right? Like, who remembers what the fight of the year was in 2018? Nobody. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was a beast. What does that do for me? Yeah. Yeah, Right? What does that do for me? Yeah. And if you can't pay your bills and you're asking people to borrow money, I swear to you, I I had another guy. Uh, former world champion, two division world champion. I swear to you, last month he asked me for a hundred dollar loan. Wow, yeah, you see, no, it's sad. It's, uh, it's I, sad. I feel like what helps. I mean, guidance is important too, man. If you, it's what you do with the money that is gonna help you. But now, if you make, let's say, I don't know, let's just put five hundred thousand out there. But now you're buying a fancy car. Yes, you're buying fancy jewelry. You're partying, you know, two days out of the week and you're just blowing money. I mean, eventually you're going to be in a situation where just like those guys came to you, it's going to be like that. It will be so dumb. And and the difference is, is that, you know, most boxers don't come from high education levels. They don't right. come from high social status. They just don't. That's just not what boxing. And that's why they can fight their asses off because yeah. they're built tough. And. When when you get when you go from zero, which most fighters come from a zero background, 
They don't come from wealth. They don't come from money. They don't come from education. When you go from zero to making six figures, seven figures a fight, who's going to blame Mike Tyson? By the, 16 years old, he's arrested over 50 times in, in, foster, in and out of foster homes, arrested in trouble. At 19, he's making $10 million a fight. Who's going to blame Mike Tyson for having a substance problem? Who's going to blame Mike Tyson for buying BMWs for everybody and buying jewelry? Who's going to blame him? Right. Who taught the guy? Right. right? And it's very difficult because it's his money. Very yeah. difficult to be able yeah. to control that. So you're right. Surrounding yourself with people that can educate you and how to invest, where to put the money, what to put a budget. Assets, liability. People Every- got to be able to distinguish. Your your assets got to match your liabilities as far as you shouldn't be buying a 50K watch if you're making 200K, you know? So a lot of people just don't understand that. There was a fighter out of Vegas. And I don't want to mention his name. He He got his first world title fight. And he got paid a quarter million for it. He lived in an apartment at the time. He got paid a quarter million. I swear to you. The Monday after the fight, two Mondays after the fight, he came to the gym in a Bentley. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Still lived in the apartment, but now he's got a Bentley. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah. job in a Bentley. <laughs> I mean, bought himself a liability for the rest of his life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go buy yourself a property that's going to pay for the Bentley. Right. And you know, and you can make so money exactly. off of it later on in life. You know, like it's it's better than even putting it in the bank because, you know, nine out of ten times it's only going to go up. You know? And you know, th- and the reason we talked about that is it went to the YouTube guys and how much they're getting paid. But right. that's why they're doing. It. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I I agree with both of you. I think it's great for boxing. I think you're right, Khaled. That sorry, Sheikh Khaled. That um that. It brings new eyeballs to the sport because it does. Mm -hmm. And mind you, those eyeballs, yes, they're ignorant to the sport. It's okay. They're still eyeballs. They'll say things like, you know, they'll they'll say, you know, just crazy things like, uh, you know. They think they know, but they really don't. But we still still enjoy that eye. Because it's just bringing more to boxing, man. Two two guys that go in there, man, they're risking their life, you know. So for us to get that more attraction to what we do is very important, you know? So I, I can never knock it. Like, no, I love absolutely it. not. And, and, and it's okay. And I see it only getting bigger. Yes. I yes. see, I see honestly, even rappers, you know, even though there is rappers out there uh, doing it, but like bigger rappers. Here's my problem about. with that. I'm afraid someone's really going to get hurt. Mm. I'm afraid mm. one of these guys are going to get clipped yeah. and it's going to be detrimental. Somebody. Yeah. It, it, because you don't play boxing. Right. You, know, you can play everything else. You don't play boxing. Sure. Um, you know, one of the guys was saying, you know, do you think do you think Badu Jack could beat Floyd Mayweather? And I'm like, that's silly. Guys, <laughs> I mean, you're talking about, you know, a 60 pound difference yeah, in yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we talking about here? Yeah. You know, so those are the kinds of questions that you get sometimes with those guys. Yeah, because they don't know that they can't com- really compare that because it, it, it would never it happen because sense. of the weight. You know? All right, pound for pound. Ready? Yeah. Who's the best YouTube boxer? YouTube, Jake Paul, probably. So, Dom? Best. Pound for pound. Boxer. Man, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it, man. I, I like Soul Poppy. A lot of people who? don't know who he is. Yeah. Saying who. <laughs> he's not really up there yet, but to me, he's the best. But for a name that everybody knows, I would I would say Jake Paul as well. And everything he's done. Yeah. He's helped I think a lot of fighters. Skill-wise, skill-wise. The reason wise. why yeah, we can't really good. say Soul Poppy it's because he hasn't fought anybody. Yeah, but really. who, uh, Bro. that's a real guy? Yeah. His name is Soul Poppy. Yeah. He's not the one that got yeah, knocked out of the ring, is nah, he? Hell no. Come but on. My boy I'm saying Slim he's the best one. He might have gotten clipped. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, he, he's an Asian dude. And he's nice. He doesn't look like a YouTube boxer, though. God, this is, I've been in boxing my whole life, he bro. He doesn't. He doesn't. For I, sure. I'm looking at him and I'm like, yo, this dude has looks like he got real experience. Like he's he, a Southpaw, too. He so. knows what he's doing. Where is he out know? of? Um, I don't even. I'm not even sure. Is he stateside? I have no. Or is he international? Yeah, yeah. I no, mean, he's stateside. 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 Yeah. Has he fought? Oh yeah, he's fought like uh maybe like three or four times. Yeah, yeah, like a first round knockout so quick. Yeah, in London. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. The guy he fought was nowhere on his level, but he's really good. He's really good. Yeah. He's entertaining, and he, he's really good. Yeah, that, I mean, entertainment is everything. Right. Yeah. I think you're right. I think Jake Paul maybe. I'll tell you what. I had the fortune of, of of working with KSI. That kid can fight. I know a lot of people, you know, give him a lot of shit. But that kid can fight. Mm-hmm. 
I, I can tell he you can what, fight and he can punch. What I think he's about he's abnormally strong. Right. KSI has the heart. Yes. He has the power one million percent. And he's he gotten a little bit better with it with his skill, but I must say he seems like a fighter that needs more experience as far as I feel like he'll get hit. No, no, you know? Dom, you're absolutely accurate. Here's the difference. KSI is not a fighter. Right. He's yeah, an entertainer. Yeah, he's exactly. a social media guy. You know, he's a hip hop artist. He's not yeah. a fighter. Yeah. So when he does dedicate that small pocket of time into boxing, which you and I both know, you can't dedicate just a small time for boxing. Right. It's got to be a full time job. But when he does dedicate it, he does very well. And yeah. and I, I'm telling you from firsthand experience, his heart, I'm telling you, when he came to Vegas, man, he shut down all of the social media. He shut down everything. He just dedicated himself to the fight. I could respect that. Yo, no, he, I, res, I, I gained so much respect for JJ. A, that that's that. another thing I want to talk about because that's another thing I respect. Like, just like the two YouTubers that I work with, Adam Salah and Slim. When I tell you they work hard and. It has to be because of how hard they have to work to keep the content out, everything they have to do with with, uh, with YouTube. People think it's easy just up uploading videos. No, it's tough, man. Yeah. So for me to see them transfer and really go as hard in boxing, it's like... Uh, I'm impressed, yeah. honestly. Like, I believe yeah. Adam didn't post any video for the whole camp of his last fight. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're dedicated to it, man. You know what? They lose, they know they're going to be a meme. They know they're going to be, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. There's also, a, that's a double-edged sword. Yes, they will make, you know, financially uh, do a lot better than most other fighters. But the flip side of it is they don't have a good showing. It's oh, a wrap for them. Oh, you know, it's oh, so yeah, bad yeah. for them. Like, yeah. I, my heart still breaks for Nate Robinson. I was just wow. about to say that because oh, I was man. thinking about that when you said it. That that was bad. That was terrible. Uh, yeah, man. But see, those they the did kind of dirty. They, they sure did. <laughs> they, they, they put a lot of stuff out there. That man. was bad. Man. That was so bad. So bad. Like, he's a basketball the, player. If you saw the Swaggy yeah. P fight, did you? Is he the one that got knocked out of the ring? Yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> so, That's the guy that got knocked out of the so ring. He uh he got hit in his eye and he basically flopped like he was in a basketball game. And he spoke about it after. He's like, oh, man, I just flopped. <laughs> <laughs> I I it's like he forgot he was boxing. You know, he just flopped and he just stood there laying down. Did like, he get stopped? Oh, my eye. No, oh, the ref ended up stopping yeah. it. He oh. stood up, but he was still like oh, acting yeah. like he wants to call timeout. Yeah, that's something. the only thing is, you know, these guys can get clipped. They can get hurt. No basketball player. He didn't even get fighting. clipped. It was like a little poke True. in the eye. It wasn't even oh, really? like real. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing that I, I would put a okay. reservation on so, is... Is that that's yeah. why I give them so re so much respect to actually get in there because come on, you got those eight to ten ounce gloves on, yep. Yep. and man, you can just go to sleep, sleep, and you know how much haters you probably got through YouTube world. You might get a lot of love, but trust me, you got a lot of haters too. So they're gonna they can't wait to see something crazy happen just so they can post that meme and just go crazy with it. So. Man, you know scary, who the man. hardest working one is? I just totally forgot about him. I wor we worked with him also when he came out to Vegas. Is uh, Anison Gibb? Oh, mm. seven Gibb. figure yeah. Gibber. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, telling yeah. you, Gibb yeah, worked Gibb harder so than any. I think most fighters that I know. That yeah. kid busted his yeah. ass. Yeah. I, we see it. We see it. I mean, look at the fight. That that's where, yeah. where Adam Gibb fought. did phenomenal. And it looked the, the guy was a the McBroom guy was was a meme. Yeah, a big Honestly, time meme they too. They should have been stopped that McBroom guy. Oh, 100%. oh really? Yeah, they should have been stopped the fight. He was, he he, he dropped him, him early, though, didn't he? He dropped the first him once round. in the first round, and then in Wait, the second round McBroom he, dropped Gibb. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then in the second round, Gibb dropped McBroom like six times. Oh, really? Yeah. And two, the six, the, the six drop was like a a clean knockout. He slept That's him. Crazy because California is usually very strict. And that was Jack yeah. Reese I mean, that, that. It all that didn't happen in one fight. round. All the knockdowns didn't happen in one round. Yeah, well, no, no. Second, Jack's third, a so. good referee. Yeah, he yeah. really yeah. is. I'm surprised he didn't stop it, man. Uh, he'll, he'll let you fight. He'll let you fight. If he sees that there's a little hope, he'll let yeah. you fight. He re he ref one of my fights uh, before. Yeah, and he's he's a good ref. Yep. So I I, I was in the stand. I was like, man, they better stop this. They're gonna get this man hurt. Yeah. And then boom, he got hit with that.
So, yeah. Dom, word on the street is there might be a comeback. Inshallah. I'm working on it, man. I, I mean, you know, sometimes you get a little bored with uh, w- with what you're doing in life. And, uh, <laughs> man, I've been boxing since I was eight years old. Okay, I'm 33 now. So, you know, when I hit like 30, I, I just I, I took a break. And I was... It, in life period, if you lose the hunger for something or yeah. if you're just doing it because you have the skill, especially in a, bo- a sport like boxing, it's pretty dangerous, man. So um, I just need a little break, but now I'm, I'm slowly getting that hunger back. Really? I want, I, and, I, and I do plan on doing it again. The blessing is you're still young. I mean, 33 is still young in boxing. You Maybe. know, I mean, that, that's, that's almost prime in True. boxing. Um, but you know, 25 years is a long time in the sport and you absolutely could burn out, especially, you know, you're fighting on big stages for so much. I mean, you reached the pinnacle, you won a world title, right? You fought legends, you beat legends, you know, you've had your setbacks, you've had your comebacks, you've had your big wins. So So it would be easy to get burned out. I can see that. Sure. And for me, like, you know, I've never worked a job in my life, but you know, some people would consider my boxing career a job, right? But, like, other than that, like, I've never done anything my whole life, you know, thank God. But um, it started to feel like a job. Yeah. And it's pretty stressful, man. I, I, I'm not used to that. And I, I didn't like it. I'm not going to lie. I was getting a little tired of it. But, you know, I mean, I've been in boxing for so long, man. I'm getting that itch, man. I'm, really? I'm getting that itch, <laughs> really? man. I'm coming back okay. and, you know. I'm going to have fun in there. He's about to lose some of his cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have fun in there. Yeah. I'm going to be smart, though. Uh, I feel like I'm going to fight a little different. Um, I definitely do feel like I'll be more entertaining than I was. Is the goal going to be to have a couple of comeback fights, or is the goal to really get it back in the title contention? Um, As of right now, my goal is just to get back in there. Yep. As far as what comes after, we'll see. You know, um... I'm going to be honest with y'all, though, man. My, my mother, man, I don't want to do it to her, man. My, my, yeah. my, you know, I scare my mother every time I get in there, you know, throughout my whole career. And I'm not trying to fight forever, you know. I, I don't want to sure. keep putting her through that, you know. So Plus, um, I mean, plus in your weight class, you know, the light heavyweight guys are really kind of big right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a fat guy. <laughs> I get it. But I still don't look like Mr. Clean. <laughs> <laughs> Back and forth <laughs> jokes. <laughs> that makes two of us. So, Dom, what's the time frame on the comeback? Um, Come on, man. Give the guys something. Uh, I would say early next year sometime. Early next year. So, you got some time. Yeah. You got some time. Who are you uh, picking to train you to come back? Have you gotten that far yet? Myself. <laughs> um, honestly, of course, I'm going to have my dad. There, my dad never agrees to be my coach, but he pretty much is my coach when, when, when he's in because he's always around. He's always in that gym. Um, respect to my coaches that I did have though, but man, you had some my, great coaches. Yeah, but my real coach is my dad. Man, sure. the stuff, the stuff that I do in that ring, the feints, the the slick stuff, the you know things that are different in a boxer that makes them special. I learned all that through my dad, man. So, Don, did your dad box? My dad's never boxed, but he's he grew up in uh, Bed Stuy, Brooklyn, and he's had a lot of street fights. <laughs> he's had a lot of street fights, man. One time he told me he was getting kicked down the stairs all the way from like the floor, <laughs> <laughs> floor five, floor five to like floor one. But he did tell me a lot of other fights he won too. You know, <laughs> my dad was slick, man. My dad told me he used to. He said, "Man, he." You know, when there was a bully, you know, to show everybody that he's not scared, he said, the dude would be like, you know, I'll beat you. You know, he's coming at my dad. And my dad says, so I'll just start making noise until I see the security getting closer. And he said, I would hit him with like a two, three piece real quick. He said, I know this guy will beat my ass, but. <laughs> I got to get off. Yeah, he said, he said he gets off like two, three shots real quick. And boom, by the time they break it up, now everybody's. On my dad, like, Ollie, oh, he's the man. <laughs> you know, he gets the respect, you know. But, yeah, my dad wasn't a punk, though, man. He, he he was ready to fight. No, I had the honor and the pleasure of speaking with your father a, a few days back, and and he seems like he's very sharp. 
He understands the boxing game. He understands the street game. He understands, you know, life in general. It was, yeah. uh, I, I can see where yeah. you get that from. Yeah, my, my, my dad is, uh, man, I can't, I can't thank my dad enough, honestly. My dad is, he's just, he knows what, he knows what he's doing in life, period. You know, and he raised me the right way, respectfully. May um, Allah give him a long life of inshallah. health and inshallah. success, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, Wrapping it up for OSP TV, the legend Saddam Ali in the house. The comeback has been announced. Look for it early next year. And, of course, the prodigy 11-0, Sheikh Khalid, is back in the mix. He's yes, got the 118-pound division on notice. And with that, we're going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you for tuning in. My team, my family, my OSP, and we're out. Taking down.